In this episode of Exploring Sims 4 Cottage Living's gameplay, I'll be getting deeper into its features. Thank you to EA Game Changers for letting me play with this pre-release version of the pack, but do note that it is not the final build and may change. I have a cow and some chickens, but I really want a llama to see if it's any different. I go through this really long, drawn out build mode hell where I attempt to use move objects to fit two of the barns on my tiny lot. The problem with that is, the chickens now have routing errors, even though they seem like they're on open ground. So we can't do that yet, but in the meantime, I've deleted the fence and doubled my chicken population. Now the animals are really wandering around. It's, it's total chaos, but I didn't realize at the time it could probably get worse. The oversized crops have now grown and I didn't know it at the time, but they will not continue growing from this stage. So I waste a lot of time over the next few days caring for these and even waste some of that fertilizer. Not having a fence seems to increase the interaction between my chickens and the local wildlife. <laughs> I just want to be able to say that they're free range, you know? The cow is doing well. But the thing about this content is that now that you've seen me clean a cow, milk a cow, and dance for a cow, there isn't much else to show until we get into treats. So time advances a bit faster between interesting events now. I do not want this video to be used as a sleep aid. The new canning feature is pretty decent for making money, but it's really repetitive for that use, especially because of a very odd decision Maxis made. This is what happens every time my sim makes a batch. One jar goes on a counter or table and the other two go into my inventory. So I have to not only click repeatedly to keep canning, but I also have to wrangle extra jars. Taking care of two chickens and a cow can be pretty time consuming, but you can see it's clear that my chickens enjoy their newfound freedom. <laughs> Every now and then when you clean the barn, you get a fertilizer and that's cool, but I think it can only be used on the oversized crops and that's a bit disappointing. I think that the end game goal in this pack is treats. Since there's no animal care skill, you've got to unlock them. You unlock them by using them. It gives you the recipe immediately. One of the goals of the aspiration is to get a wild bird or rabbit den on your lot. This is kind of the bummer about tutorials as aspiration. It kind of dilutes secrets you might discover. It turns out that wild birds are like patchy. I sort of naively thought they'd get bored if I used the same social or that I had to give them gifts. But nope, they love to hear me ramble. So you know exactly what I do at that point. Yeah, I go on speed three and spam the hell out of it. <laughs> oh damn, I really did need that fence. <laughs> okay. Cool. Befriending them lets me put one on my own lot. I do have to befriend this new one, but that's no problem. The cool part about these birds is they give you help with your garden. They help take care of insects, and I think rabbits help with weeds. I decide to try the same thing on a rabbit immediately. <laughs> it works great. Just spam the same social about 15 times. Oh my god, they give you gifts? A golden honey milk? That seems like something that's really hard to get for some reason. Like, you know, probably what a gold cow gives. The next day, I try messing with my new bird friends. They tend to go to sleep at around like 8 or 9 p.m., so I had to wait. We see some of the animations from the trailer, but I realize these birds also give you gifts. 
An anglerfish. Hey, oh my goodness. Hey. This is feeling like it might be quite lucrative. <laughs> I look up what that golden honey milk does that I got, and it's good for cross stitching. It increases skill gains. So it's a good time to check that out. Dazed? <laughs> Great. So it's useless for everything else. Man, that skill gain bar is not moving at all like I'd hoped. Well, at least he got it done before it wore off. I really wish they would make high-end special buffs last a bit longer. Jeez. You're kidding me. I can't make another because the wimp pricked his finger. I'm locked out for three hours. That's longer than the honey milk lasted. <laughs> While my sim is cleaning up in the bathroom, a fox straight walks into my house. I do not know if that is supposed to happen. <laughs> but we use my pro gamer tip. Spam this over and over. And maybe sing to them to get some footage for this video. So you can ask them not to steal once you've become friends. I had hoped, what with that whole discover gift preferences thing, that I'd really need to figure that out to become friends with these animals, but it's just not the case. <sighs> my farm chores now revolve around getting a gift from my birds every day. I finally figured out how to position my farm to fit a llama, and the reason I was having trouble is probably due to the fact that chickens are not only objects, but also the feed on the ground are objects. So, I own a llama. I'm going to welcome him by crafting some friendly treats. Or am I? <laughs> what the heck? These are worth so much more than the apples I'm putting in, and I can make eight at once. <laughs> Cha-ching, baby. <laughs> Okay, I give my llama that treat and try getting to know it a little bit. It spits in my face. So I buy a second bird tree so I can get more gifts. The next day, the llama's being a bit more friendly. It's got this wonderfully derpy look to it. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. This is one of those things that Maxis excels at. They are very good animators, although sometimes new animations are sparse. You see what I mean about my farm getting a bit more chaotic now. There's stuff walking around everywhere. I really wonder if some people's laptops will be able to handle all this. When the birds start doing this, you know you're really getting somewhere with them. Yep, we're best friends now. A bird of paradise. Ooh. They just gave me a pattern unlock as a gift now, too. I have a bunny rabbit home now as well. Early the next morning, I try to do a little adventuring. I'd seen that big spiral maze, but don't know what's in the middle. It's a giant snail statue. <laughs> I will have to look into this when I have the final version, but it appears you can hide a gift and someone else will hide a gift for you. And you can take a selfie with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now I scope out some of these ruins. It's very pretty during the daytime. There are gobs of these mushrooms you can pick, and they all give it an emotion or some kind of bonus. Hey. Farm chores are really quite intense now with a llama, a cow, and two chicken coops. I stop really caring about my chickens. Please don't report me to PETA. But the llama needs shaved, and of course the birds want to give me gifts too. Don't they, furball? <laughs> Today, the birds gave me Cooking Volume 3 and a rainbow egg. My new bunny ranch resident gives me a cross-stitch pattern. I'm not very grateful. 
but it does agree to help with gardening. I try the cross stitching again. Same result. I can't get more than one done. I feel like this is kind of a copy paste of knitting in a new style. Sorry, it just doesn't feel very new because of that. Cross stitching and foraging that night was a mistake. Look at what my sim wakes up to. Oh my god. Do I have a lot of work to do <laughs> after going out foraging again? I'm screwed. For some reason, when my sim cleans a coop or a barn, look what happens. It looks like dealing with trash is one thing. So I tried moving my outdoor can to help him, and instead it just leads to more walking. A fox swipes an egg, but I catch it in the act and kindly ask it to give it back. It was $10, so I'm not really even sure it was worth my time. Look at Jeff Bezos over here. Complaining about... $10 for four minutes of work. <laughs> I like my llama better than my cow for now because I have seen the cow animations like 45 times now. The birds giving skill books is really weird, but they're worth good money. <laughs> I'm going to try cross stitching again, but I just know I'm going to regret it. Well, I got lucky. I managed to get a few of them done this time. Later, I would hang one on a wall just so you can see it. You have to click it in your inventory to make a wall mount copy first. It takes me a while, but I finally get that these oversized crops are not going to grow anymore. So I harvest them and try planting some of those mushrooms I found. A fox has turned into an elder and died of old age in the neighborhood, so my camera auto focuses. I don't know what the animal death animation looks like itself, but I like that Grim doesn't stick around for these. Has it really been another week? It must be that time again. This time, the Finchwick Cow Fair. I expect this one will be much more active, as cows are so much more exciting than chickens. Looks like I can <laughs> put my cow in my inventory, and I better grab a milk. Wait, what the f***? Alexander Goth? What did I do to that kid? It must have been traumatizing swimming the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> this is the worst thing that can happen to a kid in Sims 4. They grow up to become a townie. It looks like the barns are so big that I'm only competing against one other cow. <laughs> I thought I'd do some cow tipping before I begin the competition. It might give Milkshake an edge. I think I might be screwed in this milk competition. I'm up against fire milk, but would you want to drink that? <laughs> I guess Alexander has fond memories of making cheese and apple jam. What do you know? The mayor loves milkshake. I mean, she better. I don't see another cow over there. <laughs> This fair is really, really bad right now. I hope this isn't the final product. I mean, I don't want to be a jerk, but look, they look like they're all stuck in one spot. When a celebrity shows up, it'll be even worse. My cow won second place. How can you lose when there aren't even any other cows? This is the most horrible judgment to pass on milkshake it's like they think it's not even a real cow i'm sorry milkshake i'm sorry furball you probably aren't a real llama either i'm sick of playing by the rules i'll win those competitions get my treats another way after spamming 75 talk to birds to befriend a few of these, one of my chickens has died. I mean, I think so. Grim's kind of standing there. 
A few hours later or so, the chickens come out and one of them gets reaped. It's on its feet. I don't get it. I guess this is its soul. <laughs> Wait. Two died. Three died. <laughs> What in the world? There needs to be a bit more variation in that, don't you think? And while I'm talking to birds, another goes down. And another! That's five chickens dead in one day. He would continue to do it. I, I've, I've lost count. But I'm getting rainbow wool, rainbow milk, obsidian milk. Would you please stop? Well, we can consolidate the one coop and have room for more birds now. And I finally got it. A golden treat. Oh, yeah. My bird strategy has paid off pretty well. I got another. <laughs> I got another. This is awesome. This is the best way to get treats. Forget those villagers and their errands. The next day, I got a midnight treat. I want to try it out, so we need a test chicken. Thing is, I don't want to accidentally use it on an elder, you know? It's eating it! Ooh, that is spooky. I love how it moves. Uh, I don't feel like that's the default chicken animation. It almost looks possessed. No, I, I, I think maybe it's just the default chicken animation, maybe. Chickens are just creepy little dinosaurs. Let's try the golden one. I need a new chicken, though. We want it to live a nice, long, golden life. I also got a rainbow oh. treat, so maybe try that on Milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> they just call it a clown treat. I know you guys watch some builders, but I, I don't know. I feel like my farm is amazing. In all honesty, actual builders built all of these lots. <laughs> it's why they're good and expensive. Since the birds gave me so many treats, I try crafting one for once. You get the recipe when you feed it to an animal. And I'm able to make a spicy treat. Oh. Okay, so we shave the llama and get a new kind of wool then. But it's immediately back to normal. Eh, that's a bummer, man. I, I don't think they should be permanent, but I'd like it to last a couple days to save you some clicking. I'll just get them from birds. See, I wouldn't really want to craft these unless they last longer. I hope they change that. Something about these golden and evil chickens is that you can actually ask them for help. So I ask the golden chicken for help and it runs over to my apple trees and starts casting spells. It, it says it'll improve the quality in the description. At that moment, I forgot to check what it does, but it cast it again that fast over the next day, it had made both apple trees perfect in quality. I finally noticed it while milking my clown cow, and it was still casting spells. I, I managed to see it because I realized it was messing with those trees. Treats are cool, but really powerful. Maybe too powerful. This means I need more treats. <laughs> I got rid of my llama to make more room for future expansions. You can actually trade animals for treats or meat. So that's what I did. I, I just lost the footage. <laughs> Nothing happens. It just goes inside or disappears. And you get some treats. I got a violin while doing some fishing for ingredients and realized I hadn't tried it with my animal yet. This fake cow <laughs> deserves to hear some good music well my birds like it the cow just looks a bit weirded out by it my sim sets the violin on the ground pay attention to this it becomes very relevant or i wouldn't have even bothered to show you this <laughs> 
Let's look at the evil chicken for a second. <laughs> I found a great use for those polka dot chicken clothes they gave me. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the evil chicken ran off to do, but I asked it for help and they can fight off Grim and foxes. I assume he saw a fox. I buy some more birds, you know, since they're the easiest path to most of the treats. Yes, I know, I'm a bit of a lunatic. I'm pretty sure I broke my game. I have a editing computer, so I have a Core i9 processor at 5 gigahertz, and I'm not sure what this would be like on a laptop. Um, maybe you should do villager missions if you have problems with my pro tips. <laughs> A couple days later, I start to notice something. My cow is stuck. He can't move. Yes, I I know I called him he in the last episode. I'm sorry. It's the violin. See, I ended up getting a notice that Milkshake is going to die. But while stuck, it seems she can't die. I don't know why. I guess maybe they're supposed to die inside of the pen. I'm really unsure. But as long as that violin stays there, Milkshake will keep on living. <laughs> I know I'm a little crazy with these birds, but you know, it's working really well. Look at my inventory. It's chock full of goodies. I grab the steel bladder reward for my sim so he can finally stop being interrupted by human needs while trying to talk to the birds. I organize the farm a bit, you know, to make my bird collecting more efficient. I'm a bird farmer, and they give me far more than any cow or llama possibly could. But I'm living on the edge of RNG. My life is totally random. Chickens are cool as when you transform them, they stay that way forever. Cows and llamas, you get the one harvest, I guess. Death comes for a fox that died nearby, and my sim finds it sad. I sound like a sociopath. <laughs> anyway, he wasn't fast enough to help that poor fox, but we get to see what the evil chicken does. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. So it's like Psylocke or Jean Grey. It's got telepathic attacks. While I'm cleaning all the birds out of my inventory, it does it again in the background, although chooses to go melee this time. It's time for the Finchwick Llama Fair. And while I don't have a llama, I sure do have wool. I enter gold Llama wool. The only thing I need to do to finish this aspiration is to win the contest here. <laughs> Good luck, brown llama wool. <laughs> Losers must not have any birds. <laughs> the mayor is getting a little fatter from not exercising, I guess. She's a bureaucrat, not a farmer. <laughs> she comes back to judge it again, and now the mayor is inside me. Destroying my aorta with her notebook. This must be the end. The game says I am very likely to win the competition with my excellent bird wool. The fair disappears and I got a participation award. When I got home, I got another award. Traveling unstuck milkshake. And death comes for her. But here's the evil chicken to save her from death. The violin is still trying to. Oh, oh, please no. I hate you! According to comments on the last video, I'm having a midlife crisis. I'm just a very good actor like Joey Tribbiani. But now I basically don't even have a farm, guys. Poor Milkshake. It's not like I could easily replace her. I decide it's time to get really serious about farming. Make vegetables and get rich. We haven't looked at giant crops yet, but we are sure gonna, and we're gonna get seven 
golden hens that lay golden eggs. Wow, though, you have to fertilize each and every one each and every time. I recommend not making 15 of these. Oh, no. <laughs> After a brief time, you will have to fertilize them again. In fact, you'll do it over and over again. And to actually get a giant crop... You need to do it so many times. Now, when I go to do my guide, I will probably figure out the number and help you, but I wanted to make sure I got them. So I kept fertilizing and using encouraged crop growth like crazy. With so many giant crops, I can finally show you what the birds do. They swoop in on any crops that have insects and clear them up one at a time. This will indeed be pretty cool with bees from seasons, but here's the thing. Giant crops probably won't be fertilized by bees. I can't be sure, but they use a totally separate fertilizer system. I do hope that birds will work on regular crops just fine. I didn't get to test enough during my time and I don't have any footage of it happening. But you know what? I keep getting my bird gifts and I get to where I've got seven golden treats. Seven golden hens and an evil rooster to me is the perfect way to approach chickens. Here we go. I am purchasing all new chickens so their life will be long. I haven't unlocked the life extension treat. It may be from villagers. I think it's only worth using on special chickens and big animals you're attached to. So I'm calling them all out and I'm going to have an army of golden hens to lay golden eggs and make my giant crops amazing. Oh my god, it, it didn't need it. I have exactly seven. You, you better eat that treat and get back here. Maybe if I move it in front of it, it'll eat it. Please eat it on your own. You stupid chickens! Yeah. I can't put it back in my inventory, and chickens are having routing failures. Damn it. Well, I'll need more treats to do this because I have a feeling that it's just going to lay there forever. Now to ask them for help with my garden. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh my god, get back here and help with my crops. What the... <laughs> okay, I need a fence. This is why you need a fence. And now I need a builder. <laughs> Finishing my fence turns this into a room and deletes my entire garden. I forgot how you stop this from happening. Ah, I have the best solution. We'll just put the coop there and fill in the hole with the tree. Good luck getting past that, you stupid chickens. Now let's get those last three or so golden hens and get them put to work. They're not doing anything. Do, do they not work with giant crops? Oh, man. It's, so I, I try making a mini garden of roses and bushes to make sure they're working. What happens is insane. They're upgrading them before they're even in the ground and making them all perfect. Rapid fire. I can't even finish the gardening aspiration with golden chickens as I need to evolve five plants myself. Yeah, I can put them outside. It's just wild they seemingly have no real cooldown. You remember that chicken that ran off earlier? I want to show you something. I want you to see where she was going. Look how insanely far this chicken went to look for crops to make perfect. I don't know if it'll be like this in the final build, but wow. They'll do the entire neighborhood in any other place that isn't this huge. It's kind of cool, but pretty OP. So the chickens don't work on giant crops, I suppose. Through my own hard work, or, you know, my fingers cooking, I finally got actual giant crops. They kind of consolidate into one, and you can tell when you're getting there. I suppose the more you fertilize, the more it'll weigh. I put a ton of resources into these, so I'm curious what they'll be worth. 700 and 500. 
What the heck? So not worth the time as a money maker. I really think they'd only be good at the Finchwick Fair. But if you can lose with golden llama wool or against imaginary cows, you may end up losing with the best possible pumpkin. Don't get me wrong, they really do look cool, but they spoil too. Maybe there's ways of preventing that. I forgot to look at the aspiration reward before I was done. Mainly because my golden llama wool lost to brown and white. My time with this pack has begun to run short. Not because Sims team didn't give us enough time, but because I have other things in life than Sims. I learned a lot in my play. I didn't show everything in the pack, but I do believe I showed the major things related to gameplay. The missions have a good bit more to them in that you can upgrade your animal buildings with parts you get, and the creature keeper is an NPC that will help you trade for supplies. So there are other ways of getting treats and saving time caring for animals. A big 64 by 64 lot would be neat for at least one playthrough. I don't know if I think this pack is worth it yet because honestly I and many others feel it doesn't have enough features. In case you wonder, the actual Let's Play Total Playtime, ignoring b-roll footage and playing around outside of this save file, was a 10 and a half hours. When I get the final version, the main thing I'll be looking at is if it fits in with other content well. This is the key point of an expansion to me and something I always consider. Since I did not get to play with other packs installed, this will be the main thing I look at when doing my review. If you like my work, you can support me and thanks to those of you who do. I will be doing a lot more on this pack in coming weeks. Something more structured. Thank you, as always, for watching.